of 20 years. Any roles that I turn down that I regretted? No. Nope. Whether it's successful or not, if it didn't, if it didn't click, if it, I can't do something just because I think it would be successful. This happens when you do as an actor it fails, no matter who you are. So you just have to take out the merits of whatever it is. Yes. Did Sam Raimi give me any what? Any hints in a fourth Evil Dead movie? He's not thinking about an Evil Dead 4. He's thinking about getting a fat ass paycheck from the Wizard of Oz for $200 million. That's what he's thinking about right now. He's thinking about how much can I milk this guy? My good buddy said, yes, yes. Sir. What was my least favorite class in grade school? What grade are you in now? Six? Six was good. Because you taught, I was top dog, and you top dog in sixth grade when I was in that school system because it was K through six. And then we were seven, eight, nine, and then 10, 11, 12. I think it's what, nine through 12 now? What a rip off. You're too young to be in high school in ninth grade. Sixth grade was good. You have, what, what happens next year for you? You don't know? Is that terrifying? You have no idea what's going to happen next year? Do you go to middle school next year? What's that? Oh, you're already in middle school. Six, seven, eight, nine? No, six, seven, eight. So you're just a small right now. Right? Two more years. Eighth grade was good. Eighth grade was a good year. How's the speech class? What are you going to be when you grow up? Don't look at your mom. She don't, she's not going to tell you what you're supposed to be. Mom, what should I be? You figure that out, Paul. What do you want him to be in your ideal, ridiculous, ideal world of what he should be? He wants to be an actor. Oh, dear God. I'll set him straight, don't worry. My son wanted to be a stuntman. So I told him my stuntman story. A movie called Mind War, a sort of obscure, little bunch of movie I did. We're setting up to film a scene with a stuntman on it. I'm going to fight a stuntman. He's playing the back. And he's standing there and he starts going like this. He's really uncomfortable. And he had to sit down. And we're like, why? What's the matter? He goes, well, I did this, this car gag where you jump a car and land it too hard and compress three vertebrae in my back. And I can't really stand for very long. So now he's sitting. And after a while, he's sitting and he's just going, Ah, he has to get back up. And again, we're like, why? What's the matter? Are you alright? He goes, well, I did this burn gag where they light me on fire. I didn't put enough burn gel on my ass, so I got second degree burns on my ass. So I can't sit and I can't stand. And my son's face was like this. He was like, I'll never be a stunt man ever. <laughs> so let's hook up. I'll get you drunk. We'll tell you some actor stories. <laughs> and you'll never want to do that ever. But, look, here's the final story. Do what you want to do. You gotta do what makes you happy. Otherwise, what are we doing here? Is this a rehearsal? This is not a rehearsal, Paul. Go home and clean your room while you're at it. Do you have your own room? What, do you sleep with a mouse? Where are you sleep in the basement? Your parents are gonna change up in the garage? What's up? You share a room. With who? My mother. Yeah. No, your brother. I, I'm not going to pick on you anymore. I was like, Jesus, you want to come see the shirt back? I was like, I'm mortified. Yes. What secondary work would I recommend for any of the burn notice evil did? The easy man. Uh, probably Bobo Hotel. I think it's one of the better elements with cancer on your penis movies. There are. Further and further back, a movie called Running Time. It's a very cool crime drama. It's like one shot, the whole movie. 
movies played out in one shot. It's very good. Yeah. It's a crazy movie. You should check it out. The guy gets guy is let out of prison and he goes right into robbing the prison laundry where he worked for all these years because he knew how it worked. So it's it's a great kind of Tarantino-ish kind of movie. Yes. What's the worst bit of torture Sam Raimi's ever inflicted on me? How do you even start? Where, where do you begin? <laughs> Him poking me with a stick, hitting my ankle with two by fours. Two by fours, yeah. I'm shot trapped in for a shot in Army of Darkness where me and my evil doppelganger were two headed creatures. And so I have to be strapped in so that, you know, because of the special effects, I can't really move. So I'm physically strapped to like a, a pole. And no one can find Sam. We're ready to go. Where's Sam? He's behind me, behind all the equipment with a two by four. And he's hitting my ankles going, you ready? You ready? You thought I was kidding. You ready? I'm like, I'm ready. I'm ready to kick your ass if I ever get out of this. Stop hitting my ankles. I don't think you're ready. You ready? You ready? When he finally directed quick to the dead, I'm like, Sam, are you going to hit Jeannie Hackman with a 2x4? <laughs> what are you going to do to Sharon Stone? Are you going you to like throw her down some stairs? What do you think? <laughs> We're not going to care for you. Are you going to kick him in the face? What do you think? What do you think? Are you going to get him motivated? Russell Crowe. Well, you duck, or else the girl's gonna throw shit to you, so it's fine. <laughs> yes. If I had gone into acting, what would be my second choice? Uh, park Ranger. Yeah, I'd be making your kid pick up crap that he threw at the campground. This kid right here. I <laughs> refuse to clean his room. Yes. Yes. Yeah, you're the bigger kid. What did I get on the Old Spice Challenge with Fabio? What, what is the Old Spice Challenge? He's throwing challenges, Fabio is. Yeah, I'm not real worried about Fabio one way or the other. I wonder how many Twitter followers he has. Probably more than me. Poser. Yeah. Favorite Chuck Finley scene? You're referring to the alter ego that Sam Max uses in the Burn Notice show. I don't have a favorite. They're, they're still coming. They're still filming them. So, you know, until they cancel it, I don't have a top scene yet. That's, that's for the pundits to decide. Put on YouTube. Cool. On to your terms. Uh, yes, Captain Ridiculous. Oh, and the Joker. Yes, yeah, some Joker. Who is that guy? Some Joker. Who in the movie he 
runs a little chalkboard of, of all the fights. He keeps track of it. But his daughter in the movie gets abducted by a sleaze bag and sort of turned into a prostitute. So that actor was complaining to Sam for 10 weeks that he never does anything to defend his daughter. Week after week, Sam's like, okay, Dad, yeah, thanks, Dad, okay, 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 finally, he sees me. He sees the answer to his prayers. We're going to shoot a fake scene for Pat Hinkle to shut him up. <laughs> so the scene is, me as the gross guy comes up to his daughter, and Sam says, okay, you're going to say this to her, say, hey, girly girl, you and me are going to do the devil's dance. And then Pat Hinkle comes in and defends me from this, defends her from me. And so Sam to Pat Hinkle is saying, now Pat, this guy, don't worry about his name, this guy, I'm not just stuck in. This guy. <laughs> Pat Hinkle had no idea who I was. And so when you, when he said that to your daughter, why don't you come up behind this guy and grab him by the neck and the cat. Really hard, really hard to say, you keep away from my daughter. Then I want you to spin him around and shove him away and then kick him in the ass as he's going away. Why don't you kick him hard? I kick him like a mean it. Five takes, six takes, seven takes. Pat, are you mad at him or not? Do something here. Put seven takes, put eight takes. Pat ain't so funny. Cut. Pat, that was perfect. You feel good, Pat? Yeah, I finally got to defend my dog. He goes walking off the set like this, because he's like, the happiest not recovered. Sam comes over to me and goes, we're not even going to process the film. <laughs> but because I filled out the paperwork as the wedding shim, I'm credited as the wedding shim. Every six months, I get a $4.32 check from the quick and the dead. <laughs> yeah.
Oh, Shemp or Curly? Oh, Shemp by a mile. Curly's too easy. He's just a fat ball guy who spins around on the floor. Shemp is the ugliest man on the planet. You always have to get pictures and like a cat would look at it and go, Ah! And like he tries to dress up real nice and he show up too. Like bring a diamond and his girlfriend. So he can hold up a, a magnifying glass in front of it to think how big it is. I thought Shep was awesome. We, we spoke with Larry on the phone in the 70s. We called the old actors home in California. His nurse was Mrs. Ross. We called about 11 o'clock in the morning and asked for Larry. He was still alive. He had a stroke, but you know, so we could torment Larry. So he's, Larry's well open up. Yeah. My memories of Groves High School in Birmingham is that it was not as big as it is now when I was there. It was sort of a, you know, it was a good school, but now it's like a university. I don't know what happened. They just, they couldn't hide the money in a while. They started just building strange large wings on it. I don't know, I, I don't recognize the place. It's like Royal Oak. When I grew up in Royal Oak, it's where you got flat top haircuts. Now I can't afford to park in Royal Oak. <laughs> there was a shithole when I was there at Lafayette, 11 mile in Crown Road, Jackass Circle, whatever it was. <laughs> yes. Uh, I'm disappointed that this video chose Liam Neeson over me as Darkman. I don't think I was ever in the running as Darkman. No. They wanted some guy that nobody knew. Could have been either one of us at that time. Really? <laughs> uh, yes. Any good stories of working in France on the ice skier? My favorite story is that it's called La Pate Noire, the ice rink, not the ice skater. Why do you care about France? Have you ever been there? Seems strange that I was in a French movie. Foreign country, yeah, I've never worked in a foreign country on a movie, other than Bulgaria, New Zealand, South Africa, France, and where, where, where's that? All of Canada, every major city in Canada. Um, I don't, you make movies where they tell you to go. I got that script when I was working in Zena on in New Zealand, but it was in French. So I'm like, what? Can they send me uh, an English word? <laughs> So, I didn't care what it was, I was going to be in it. I was going to be in a French movie. It's important to have one French film on your resume. As obscure as it is, I was acting with Dolores Chaplin, which is Charlie Chaplin's granddaughter, which was weird. <laughs> the whole thing was weird. There was a, there was a production assistant who used to bring me on to like every morning. And I finally asked the producer, I said, how did you find me to be in this movie? How do you even know, like, what? Why are all the weird American actors? Because they're supposed to be an American actor. So they, they pointed to the kid who brought me on to a certain morning. They go, oh, he recommended me. <laughs> he was just some fine fan from France. So I never speak bad about my French brothers now. I've been in a French film. Yeah, Peter Weller, well, take that, Peter Weller. Well. How many French films have been in? I bet he's been in a couple. He's got a weird resume, yes. Hi, how you doing? 